Antwerp in Belgium. A place known for its fine arts, fashion, and a busy port that made it the centre of the world's diamond trade. What do I know about diamonds? And I come from Antwerp. And yet, it's not all glitz and glamour here. And you've only got to go for a short drive to find out why. Yes, this beautiful old city has a big traffic problem. One that's not just impacting local people and industries, but the rest of Europe too. But thanks to some incredible underground construction methods, Antwerp's now on track to complete a massive piece of infrastructure. One that it's been trying to finish for decades. It's big. The area around the city is becoming one epic building site, creating a lineup of the most impressive engineering this country has ever attempted. Sites like this are why I love construction. From sunken river tunnels to routes stacked inside a canal and massive new parks, sit back and get ready for a deep dive into one of Europe's most important and lesser known mega projects. There aren't many European cities better placed for international trade than Antwerp. It has the Netherlands to the north, Germany to the east, Brussels to the south, and to the west, that big old patch of water known as the North Sea. Antwerp has one of the world's major seaports. Huge highways from those other countries and cities all lead here, converging in a single stretch of tarmac in the outskirts known as the Antwerp Ring Road. But hold on a minute, isn't a ring road supposed to be ring-shaped? Well, yes, and because this one isn't, getting from A to B by car can be a frustrating experience. In 2022, drivers spent an average of 61 hours stuck in traffic, thanks in part to that unfinished ring road. The existing tunnels under the river have become bottlenecks, and the congestion has spread out to residential areas. If all of that weren't bad enough, the road is also a crucial element of the Trans-European Transport Network, connecting Paris and Amsterdam along the North Sea Mediterranean Corridor. But things are about to change. Antwerp is finally putting the last piece of the puzzle in place with the fantastically named Oosterweel Link Project, a set of building works that should be simple but really aren't, creating hassle for construction teams and residents and great material for a construction YouTube channel. A lot of the challenge here is down to geography. First off, there's a river in the way, and any attempt to complete the ring would have to contend with another water obstacle, the Albert Canal. It's why this is being called Belgium's Project of the Century. It was first put forward way back in the mid-1990s, and it's now being developed by Lantis on behalf of the Flemish government. All up, this is much more than just another boring ring road like the UK's M25. Here, there are a lot of tunnels being built in some very unusual ways. This massive construction project is taking a lot of time, money and expertise, and this to the long road ahead. Looking at the wider sector, analysts say it could take another year for Belgium's construction activity to rebound to pre-pandemic levels. Investors in every surrounding sector have been affected. That's caused savvy ones in the highest tax brackets to invest more in alternate markets where assets like fine arts have thrived in even the most devastating economic downturns. Their near-zero correlation to traditional equities allows them to move independently from the market. And that is where today's video sponsor Masterworks comes in. During a tumultuous time for stocks and real estate, they were able to generate over $49 million in art sales and distribute the proceeds to their investors. Shares of art from the biggest names on the scene – Basquiat, Banksy, Picasso and more. Each of their sales have delivered a profit thus far, which is why over 900,000 users have signed up. Shares have sold out within minutes, but our subscribers can skip the waitlist and get started today by clicking the link in the description. Now, let's get back to Antwerp's massive infrastructure upgrades and exactly what's involved in it. As our regular viewers will know, building infrastructure in the middle of an existing city isn't exactly easy. And as you can imagine, there's a lot going on here. But we've lined up a banging tour of the engineering highlights for you without too much Belgian waffle. 
first up is the Skelt Tunnel, a huge new tunnel that's being dug, funnily enough, under the River Skelt. And this massive site behind me is where the portal to that tunnel is being excavated. When you actually come to the construction site, you're just struck by the scale of this project. The excavation they've dug is huge. The engineering that's happening is huge. And everywhere you look, it's just a hive of activity and stuff happening. It's mesmerizing to watch. This massive tunnel is a key part of completing the ring, helping drivers and cyclists get under the river. Yes, not only is this a six lane tunnel for cars, three in each direction, there's also a six meter wide tube just for bikes. First of all, we had to excavate a huge construction pit going up to minus 25 meters below surface. That meant the watering of the soil excavating. And from the moment we had this construction pit ready, we could start building the actual tunnel. And that is what we are building at this moment. What's also impressive about this part of the project is the way that new tunnel is being built. Using what is my favorite tunneling technique, all because it makes for some truly epic engineering, the immersed tube method. The Immersed Tube Method is quite simply a masterclass in construction and engineering. To create the 1800 meter link, eight huge tunnel segments, each weighing 60,000 tonnes, are being slotted together under the water. First, the team excavated this huge new hole in Zeebruges, about 100 kilometres away from Antwerp, where there's a lot more space. Within it, they're constructing eight enormous new concrete tunnel segments. When ready, special seals will close off their openings at each end. This vast hole will then be flooded with water and the segments will be floated to the surface. Tugboats will then be attached and when the right weather window opens in mid-2025, each of the segments is going to be pulled slowly through the sea, 180 kilometers around the coast, through a part of the Netherlands and down into Antwerp. Once there and working around the shipping schedules, each segment is going to be lowered into a new trench on the seabed. The water between each segment will then be pumped out, creating a vacuum that pulls them together to create a watertight seal. The sealed ends of each segment can then be removed, it all gets buried under the riverbed and you have a tunnel. Wow. You see these things on paper but it's not until you come and stand in front of them that you realise just how massive they are. This thing is insane, it's like a building. That's the highway tunnel, and then that's the service tunnel, another highway tunnel, then the bike tunnel there. Now you wouldn't think it's going to float, but it, it is going to float. All the way from here, all the way down to Antwerp, and then be sunk under the water and connect the city. It's incredible. Back on the portal site here in Antwerp, you can see they're getting ready for those immersed tube tunnel sections that I just showed you to arrive here at the site. So what's been constructed at the end of a new roadway is an exact replica of those segments I just showed you. Same tunnels arranged in the same way, with exactly the same dimensions. Cars will come off the existing roadway up there, drive down into this cutting, start coming into this section of tunnel, and then drive into those immersed tube tunnel segments without even realizing it, and heading on under the river. The construction of this tunnel alone is an immense procedure that demands insane levels of accuracy. A dynamic that's really energizing the amazing team tasked with building it. So the quality has to be very good. Uh, we have a lot of people who are checking, measuring, making sure that everything is on the right place. Because once the, the water is filled here in the, in the, the building dock, uh, we can not do anything uh, again. Now, immersed tube tunnels are nothing new, but they're normally built in a straight line. This route has a bend in it, which is why each of the segments, like the one I'm currently standing in, are being built with a noticeable curve. At the other end of the tunnel is the new Erstewil junction. Here, traffic will briefly appear above ground, either heading up to the ports or down into another new set of tunnels. To make it less visible from a distance, the entire junction is being sunk into the landscape. Next, connecting the Erstewil Junction to the Ring Road will be these, the Canal Tunnels. Four 2.5km tubes under the Albert Canal, stacked two by two. Now, that's not how you'd normally build a tunnel, but they're doing it like this so that drivers can head in one of two directions when they join up with the main ring road just down there. Another reason is to save horizontal space in this narrow waterway that's used by big ships, preserving the necessary depth for them. Now, to integrate the existing ring road with the new tunnels, a key part of it, this massive viaduct beside me, is being demolished. 
Replacing it will be, yep, you guessed it, yet more tunnels running under the canal and a huge new area covered in parks, cycle tracks and walking paths. But before the viaduct is taken down, a temporary bypass has to be constructed next to it first, keeping traffic moving while the tunnelling work takes place. We have a lot of obstacles in the underground because it's also the area where the old city walls were situated. We have to build across the canal also. We are working adjacent to the existing bridge and the traffic has to be maintained. And on the other hand, we are very close to uh, the residential area. So uh, that's uh, a challenge to keep the public uh, supporting us. Now, as we conclude our waffle-free tour, you might be nervously wondering how much all of this is going to cost. Well, in total, the project is expected to come in around 7 billion euros, which is about 7.6 billion US dollars at the time of filming. Most of that's being borrowed from the Flemish government, but the European Investment Bank is also putting in half a billion euros. The money will be paid back using tolls. Overall, there's been a lot going on in and around this city since works began back in 2018. And there's still a lot to do to reach the 2030 target completion date. Why 2030? Well, because this project is part of a much bigger initiative to try and make Antwerp safer to navigate, easier to access and feature more green transport options. Cleverly called Route Plan 2030, its aim is to reduce the city's proportion of car journeys from 70% down to 50%. The rest is being done via more sustainable means like public transport, cycling, electric scooters or walking. One of the main buildings constructed for the Erster Wheel was a massive new park and ride, where people can ditch their cars and jump on a tram heading to the city centre. It's all really positive stuff, but this project was first put forward back in 1996. So why is it taking so long? Well, the short answer is that it took over a decade to decide which way to do it. The original plan was to have a bridge instead of those canal tunnels. And with a 1.5 kilometer length and 150 meter height, it would have been an absolute beast. Although many businesses in and around the port area favoured the idea, in 2009 the public voted against it in a referendum. There were big concerns about the environmental impacts of such a major new road close to people's homes, and some felt the idea was being forced on them by Brussels. They might also have been put off by plans to call it the Lungavapa. In hindsight, that maybe wasn't a great name for an infrastructure project. If you're not familiar with your Flemish folklore, it refers to a giant who towered over the people of Antwerp and tormented them. A figure immortalised in this rather interestingly shaped statue. Finally, after years of debate and consultation, in 2014, the government of Flanders, the region of Belgium where Antwerp is located, approved the plan that's now underway. It's quite uh, impressive. Such kind of tunnels are being built once every 30 years in Belgium, so it's, it's, uh, it's big. It may have taken a long time to get going, and there's some significant engineering ahead to say the least. But there is now light at the end of the tunnel. In the next 10 years, we will change the city and its surroundings. So being part of that is, is uh, quite an honor. It's something to be proud of uh, later in, in, in a few years when I drive through the tunnel with my children. I, can, I will be able to say, look, that's what daddy did. Completing a project like this was never going to be easy. But thanks to some exceptional engineering, the city of Antwerp now looks set to finally finish what it started all those years ago. This video was sponsored by Masterworks. You can skip their waitlist at the link below. Don't forget that we're raising awareness of construction's mental health crisis through our Get Construction Talking initiative. You can learn more and find links to support over at getconstructiontalking.org. And as always, guys, if you enjoyed this video and you want to get more from the definitive video channel for construction, from the channel that takes you on to absolutely freezing but epic construction sites, hit that subscribe button.